Now, this is going to sound crazy, but there is actual evidence to suggest that the U.S. military was experimenting with anti-gravity technology starting in the early 2000s and continuing until at least the mid-2010s. Strap on your tinfoil hats because I want to talk to you about the anti-gravity research of Chinese-American physicist Ning Li and her work with the U.S. Army out of the Redstone Arsenal. This is, hands down, the strangest story I've ever discussed on this platform. Because, you see, not long after Dr. Ning Li signed a contract with the U.S. military to move her anti-gravity research out of the realm of the theoretical and into practical experimentation, she disappeared, creating what's become among the most pervasive mysteries in modern internet history. Let's talk about the enigmatic anti-gravity research and the disappearance of Ning Li. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is a pretty weird episode of Air Power. Ning Li was a physicist who was born in China in 1943, but by the age of 40, her and her husband decided to leave China and immigrate to the United States. In 1983, she found her way to Huntsville, Alabama. Now, Alabama may seem like an unusual choice for a physicist, but in truth, Huntsville, Alabama has a long and storied history of being at the forefront of space and military technologies. In the days following World War II, the U.S. Army's Redstone Arsenal out of Huntsville, Alabama became the centerpiece of ongoing experimentation with recovered German V-2 rockets that would go on to become the basis for both American space programs and ballistic missile efforts. And today, Huntsville is still the centerpiece of numerous ongoing technological efforts, with numerous research facilities throughout the city limits established by the University of Alabama and the Department of Defense, not to mention more than a dozen aerospace contractors with offices inside Huntsville, including Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, General Atomics, and more. Put simply, Huntsville, Alabama is where a great deal of groundbreaking research is done, and Ning Li wanted to be a part of that. By right around 1990, Ning Li had managed to secure herself a position as a research scientist at the University of Alabama's Center for Space Plasma and Aeronomic Research. And it was in this position that she would soon find some degree of celebrity. You see, the following year, in 1991, Ning teamed up with fellow physicist Douglas Torr to publish a series of peer-reviewed papers outlining their theoretical approach to beating back gravity. In these controversial papers, Ning and Tor described their theoretical approach to what they called a, quote, practical anti-gravity effect. Now, in this context, practical doesn't necessarily mean something that would work well right out of the box, but rather something that, based on their theory, could be done outside of laboratory settings, and as such, would have really practical use cases. Now, unsurprisingly, their theory reads as fairly complex to a layman like me, outlining how through the intentional rotation of ions, they could create a gravimetric field perpendicular to the axis of the ion's spin. And by aligning those rotating ions properly into a lattice they call a Bose-Einstein condensate, you could produce a strong repulsive force that could in theory, counteract gravity. Now, it's important to remind you here that while these papers were written by respected physicists and were published by respected journals, after going through the peer review process, they were nonetheless theoretical. Neither Ning Li nor Douglas Torr were claiming to have already beaten gravity. Instead, they were claiming to have devised a theoretical roadmap toward doing so. The inevitable next step was experimentation. And in 1997, Ning Li, now joined by physicists David Neuever, Tony Robertson, Ron Koskor, and Whit Brantley, published another paper. This new paper, entitled Static Test for a Gravitational Force Coupled to Type II YBCO Superconductors, outlined very real results to Ning Li's theoretical approach to anti-gravity. Now, to be clear, they weren't making anything float around the lab, but they did report what they considered to be anomalous fluctuations in the weight of a static test mass that they had suspended above a spinning superconductor. I'll just go ahead and explain it in their words from a portion of the abstract of that paper. 
Recent experiments have reported anomalous weight loss for a test mass suspended above a rotating type 2 YBCO superconductor with a percentage change of 0.05 to 2.1%, independent of the test mass's chemical composition and diamagnetic properties. In other words, these test masses they had suspended above a rotating superconductor actually lost weight. Not much weight, mind you, just 0.05 to 2.1% of its own overall weight, but nonetheless, that's pretty incredible stuff. And by stuff, I mean legitimate scientific research with actually substantiated evidence to suggest that this process really could reduce gravity's pull on an object. Now, within just two years of this paper being published, Ning Li decided to leave the University of Alabama and strike out on her own, establishing a new business called AC Gravity LLC. Now, I know that in the Alabama Secretary of State business entity records for AC Gravity LLC, which I'm likely showing on screen right now, you may note that the entity type for this company is listed as a foreign limited liability corporation. Now, that caught my attention too, but it's important to know that in the context of American corporate law, a foreign LLC just means that this company conducts business in states outside of the one in which it was originally established. It does not denote a company that was established outside of the United States. In other words, in this context, a foreign limited liability company just means that this company sometimes conducts business outside of the state of Alabama. And she was not alone in believing this burgeoning technology was promising enough to stake the rest of her career on. When she left her job, at the University of Alabama, the chair of the university's physics department, a physicist named Larry Smalley, quit with her, taking a job at AC Gravity LLC. And just about two years later, it looks like that gamble paid off. According to news reports, AC Gravity received its first Defense Department contract in 2001, worth a reported $448,970, which adjusted to today's inflation is just shy of 800 grand. Now, initially, I couldn't find any record of this contract being awarded other than Freedom of Information Act requests that were filed after Dr. Ning Lee disappeared. But then I stumbled across the Department of Defense annual report on cooperative agreements and other transactions entered into during fiscal year 2001. And as boring as that may sound, I hit the jackpot. On page 64 of this report, we can find a program entitled Gravito Electromagnetic Superconductivity Experiment that goes on to outline the contract awarded to AC Gravity by the U.S. Army Aviation and Missile Command. I'm going to go ahead and read you a direct passage from this document from the section with the heading Extent to which this cooperative agreement or other transaction has contributed to the broadening of the technology and industrial base available for meeting Department of Defense needs. Quote, this other transaction will allow the principal researcher, Dr. Lee, to attempt experimental confirmation of a theoretical model of forces generated by type 2 semiconductors and the possibility of generating and controlling significant gravitational forces via this new theory. If successful, the payoff would be enormous, i.e. the ability to generate gravitational forces artificially would allow for new forms of propulsion, new ways of controlling missiles and gun-launched munitions, the lowering of the weight of heavy vehicles, i.e. making a 70-ton tank appear to weigh much less, and the potential of deflecting or countering the guidance systems of missiles which rely on inertial guidance, like theater or intercontinental ballistic missiles. If unsuccessful, Successful, this avenue can be eliminated from future efforts and would put to rest the controversy surrounding these theories. You see, that contract was reportedly good for a year, concluding in 2002, and the last time anyone in the academic world got a good look at Ning Li or her research was a year after that, in 2003, when she attended a MITRE conference. Now, MITRE is an organization that manages federally funded research efforts, and Ning Li not only attended this conference, but she gave a presentation entitled The Measurability of AC Gravity Fields. And maybe even more interesting than that, she was joined on stage in this presentation by one of her colleagues, a U.S. Army officer from the Redstone Arsenal reportedly assigned 
to the U.S. Army's Aviation and Missile Command. Now, that means pretty unequivocally that more than a year after the conclusion of that initial contract, Ning Li was still working with the DoD. But then, Ning Li just fell off the academic radar. She stopped publishing papers, stopped making public appearances, and before long, people began to wonder if this promising physicist who seemed to have unlocked the secret to anti-gravity had gone missing, or maybe worse. We did get some tacit confirmation that Ning Li was still working with the Department of Defense in 2004 when a journalist investigating her disappearance named Tim Ventura didn't manage to hunt down Ning Li, but did manage to get in touch with one of her colleagues, another scientist named Eugene Podklitnov. Now, Podklitnov relayed that she was doing fine and was still working with the U.S. military, but could not offer any further details into the nature of their work. But after that, the trail pretty much went cold. And by 2008, four years later, people were beginning to fill in the blanks with their own conspiracy theories, starting with a scientist named Jack Sarfati who took to social media to post that he knew for a fact that Ning Li had made significant strides in her anti-gravity efforts, but had since decided to leave the United States to return to continue her work for the Chinese government. Now, this idea that a Chinese citizen would come to the United States to work their way into a position helping to develop advanced military technologies for the U.S. government, only to leave and take those technologies back to China with them, very quickly started making the rounds online because, well, it's pretty believable. And this idea got another boost in traction from the UAP UFO community because of the nature of her work. But I can say pretty conclusively that based on my research, this never happened. In fact, Ning Li lived in Huntsville, Alabama until the day she died in 2021. In July of 2023, a journalist named Noah Logan, working for the Huntsville Business Journal, decided to see if he could get to the bottom of the disappearance of Ning Li after watching an excellent video about the topic published on the YouTube channel Barely Sociable. I highly recommend that video. I'll include a link to it in the description below. Now, Logan's research very quickly brought him to the same conclusion that mine did. An obituary for one Dr. Ning Li published on July 27th of 2021 by the Berry Hill Funeral Home out of Huntsville, Alabama. And this is definitely the Dr. Ning Li that we're looking for. The obituary states very clearly that Ning Li was, quote, one of the world's leading scientists in superconductivity anti-gravity. But the obituary offered very little else in the way of details, except for the name of Ning Li's son, George Men, who still lived in the Huntsville area. Logan soon managed to get a hold of George Men and put at least part of this mystery to bed. We now know that Dr. Ning Li continued her work with the U.S. Department of Defense for the remainder of her life. In fact, at one point, her son even asked her about the secrecy related to her work, and she gave him an excellent answer. I'll quote him directly here. First off, you don't know anything. Second off, if you even think you might know something, you forget about it. And he said, okay, that's fine. Her son also shed light on why Dr. Ning Li stopped publishing her work. According to him, once she started working with the Department of Defense and secured her top secret security clearance, she began working on classified programs and was no longer allowed to publish her findings, which Dr. Ning Li seemed to not like very much. She loved publishing her work. And we also learned that there was at least a kernel of truth to the idea that the Chinese government wanted Ning Li to continue her research in China. According to her son, CCP officials visited Ning Li at her home in 2008, asking her to leave the United States to return to China to continue her work there. Ning Li rejected the offer, and as a result, the Chinese government barred her from entering the country to attend her mother's funeral. Unfortunately, Ning Li's story has a tragic end. She continued her work for the U.S. military at Redstone Arsenal and on the University of Alabama campus until 2014 when she was walking with her husband and she was struck by a car. Her husband, who wasn't hit, was so shocked by what he saw that he had a heart attack and passed away. Ning Li herself suffered brain damage, which was later compounded by Alzheimer's disease, and she spent the remaining six years of her life bedridden and being taken care of by her son. She ultimately passed away in his care in 2021. 
Of course, the real mystery here, how far along Ning Li got in her anti-gravity efforts, and whether or not her theoretical models ever proved to be truly effective, remains a mystery, and likely will be for some time to come. To tell you the truth, I don't even know what to make of her publicly available research. I just lack the technical competency required to really assess how realistic it might be. But the one thing I do know is that Dr. Ning Li was no quack. She was not a pseudoscientist. She wasn't chasing fame or even a paycheck. This woman immigrated to the United States at 40 years old and dedicated the following decades to research and development of new technologies to benefit the United States government and military. And while I can't say whether or not Ning Li ever did manage to unlock the secrets to anti-gravity, I can say that the pervasive narrative surrounding her name that you can find all over the place online, that this woman snuck into the US to steal American secrets only to bring them back to China, is wildly inaccurate. Ning Li may not have been born in the US, but that woman was a patriot. And to call her anything but that is not only inaccurate, it's pretty crappy too. And as for whether or not anti-gravity is real, I don't know, you guys tell me. And with that ends this very weird edition of Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.